shall be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Limitation on the power. And if, as I look at Mr. Trump's behavior as a statesman or as the head of this great nation, it appears as though he really didn't understand the position that he was in. It, right. It, it, right. It was a reality show. Right. And he it, it, his power, yeah. his legitimate authority, right. his power, his influence in such a manner that I sometimes wonder if we didn't do him an injustice by allowing him to sit in that seat because he obviously wasn't prepared for it. Well, you know, the thing about it, because let's say, because first I'm saying is the behavior on the show, just like we talked about Jordan earlier, we didn't see that the negative behavior, right? We saw a very professional, uh, deliberate uh, person, right? We didn't see no berating of people. The, the contestants were doing that. You know, the people that was actually playing on the teams and competing on the team, they were the ones putting each other down, right? But I'm saying that he didn't do that in the show. That was not the image portrayed. Uh, that was the image of the, somebody was saying there that when, I guess uh, one of the guys that wrote the book said that if you were working in a casino, when he showed up, he didn't want you to be seen, you know? Uh, if, of a person of color. That's what somebody was saying. If that's true, that's that shows a different behavior, right? Or if he had special guests coming, visitors coming, he didn't want to have to see. He said all the minorities had to get out of the out of the area because he didn't want that behavior, uh, that that image being seen. He wanted it seen as a uh, a great company filled with. Well, just whites. That's that's a, my understanding, but I can't validate that. Only thing I can validate is the behavior of what we saw, you know, for the last four years, right? Uh, and and that's what I'm saying is people made a decision on the election of the fruits that they saw. And even though other people sitting there saying is that the uh, uh, the policies was more important than anything else feeling the court with conservative judges. Uh, that's what they felt was more important. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But what they didn't understand is that 74 million people did not like the the way it was done. You know, you don't, it's not, you don't crush the American people. Even if you're talking about there's a political party here and there's a political party there, you may want to say, okay, this, this is a, what you call it, a contest of, beating the other party, but you got to understand the party consists of the American people. You know, you, you go after your opponent, your opponent, but you don't go after the American people, right? So what I wanted to show you next is, and that, then you can, you, can, you can talk as you read it, but Elder, look at this. This is what people are looking at uh, for this, this uh, election period. Check this out. If you, you feel free as you're reading it, if you want to say something about it, as you read, you know, if God tells you something that he wants you to share. This is uh, okay. my brethren. Yeah. Be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Yes, sir. That's uh, the first time I noticed that he said we. we? Uh. <laughs> he said we shall receive. He was talking about himself too. My brethren, be not many masters. So, he, so he's saying he was a teacher. Yeah. For many things we offend all. For in many things we offend all. Yes. Any man offend not in word. If any wow. man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Wow. And able you also to bridle the whole body. You heard that? You heard that, right? Behold, yeah. we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. Uh -huh. We turn about their whole body. Behold also the ship, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor will list us. Uh -huh. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts this great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindled it. And we talk about it, then we have to. We talk about oh, yeah. it. No, uh, I'll, I'll stop this for right now. Yeah, 
you you saw that right? Oh, yeah. We've it, seen it that for the last four years. Huh? That, that has been the trademark of Mr. Trump. Uh, his tongue, his mouth, his mouth kindled a lot of fires in the, in the United States, and it was kindling. It was kindling tremendous division. It was inciting riots. It was uh, causing people to turn to the base of nature. Yeah. And uh, he he spoke as a barbarian to me. He spoke as a person who was really uh, uh, and that's just that's just the way I perceived him. In the position that he was in, if he had been on a football team and we had played on a football team together, yeah, yeah. I probably would like playing with him because <laughs> he's got that kind of mentality. You know, he's like full force ahead, drop your head, run through that kind of thing. You know, it, it's gonna be our way or no way at all. You know. But when you're dealing with a true democracy, I mean, with a democracy like the United States of America, and a society as diverse as this nation is, that kind of mentality is just that's that's juvenile. It's it's a uh, it's really it's childish to even think because you can't. It is inherent for different conflict is inherent when different races, colors, creeds, national origins come into close proximity of each other. Uh, there's a lot of misunderstandings that take place. A lot of cultural norms don't exactly, they clash cultural norms, have yeah. to clash sometimes. And if you don't have that awareness as a leader or ruler or statesman or the head of a nation, you use your tongue like that. <laughs> I know. That one people against another people. And that's almost like coming, that is exactly like coming into your household and starting a fight. Exactly. It's like, who wants to step in your house and put you? Okay, but this is my son. You go over in that corner and daughter, you come out there and y'all come out and meet in the middle of the floor. And, win, and whoever wins, that's who wins. Yeah, right, floor. right. What's wrong with this guy? And I think for me, that was the probably the greatest, uh, I guess, birth uh -huh. in shadow. You know, it's like I, I could not embrace the fact that he so willfully pitted the people of the United States of America against each other. That was kind of like, wow. Right. And what you did was you elevated, a, like, I like your analogy using sports, right? Let's say football or basketball or whatever. Even Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan did not look at the fans, you know, like they go to another, go to another city, right? I'm going to LA. I'm going to play against LA. He did not look at the fans in the stands as the people that he wanted to crush. Right? right, it was just the team, the opposing team. Yeah, and, and and even if you remember, one of the good things about sports growing up in Little League, remember they line up and and, and they supposed to shake hands at the end of the game. At the end of the game, why? Because, because it was, it's over. The it conflict was, is over. Exactly, and see, so you can't take the the attitude of how you play a game. And then elevate that into the society, so that now it's not as you pitted against the people of the country, no, no, no. of the world. It, you can't it, think. It, Go ahead. It didn't. It doesn't work for us now in this society. I, this Johnson it, it, it doesn't work in any society. Well, what we have looked at in history, as far as man's man's history is concerned, since the fall of the garden. <clears throat> Warfare has been a part of our our um, natural interaction. I remember in the Old Testament, it spoke in terms of David standing at the castle and getting in trouble with Bathsheba when it was the season when kings went to war. Yes, sir. So the ark in Israel was out on the field, as as you ride ahead type mentioned, out in the battlefield. They was kicked back at the at the at the palace, looking at other men's wives, and ended up sleeping with them, carrying on. Exactly. And so when we when we communicate that particular scripture, portion of scripture, we kind of, I can't say we're glorifying uh, uh, warfare, but to a certain extent, we are we are acknowledging it as being a, a normal portion of our history, of our, our nature, that men fight. We go exactly. to war one with another. Father human nature, father human nature inherently it seeks to kill something. Right. And uh, I think that um, as we've grown, even as a secular, or even as a not uh, not a member of the kingdom of God, uh, not being born again, but we we're born into this 
this secular environment, to this world system, some of us elevate to the point that we realize that uncontrolled uh, 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 conflict is more detrimental than it is positive. You know, positive. It's like the weaponry that we have, the, our capability to kill racial, our, our ability to destroy one another overwhelms the yeah. desire to even engage in it. We've yeah. always known there have been bigots among us on both the black side and the white side. But who wants to incite that kind of a base of nation in your place where you want your children to be raised in safety? Exactly. So I was a little bit or a lot confused by that. And it really did seem to me that in that regard, he was a kid. He was like a child with a gun. Mm. He reminded me, he really reminded me of a, of a kid like a, a two-year-old with a 357 or something, if he can get it up. You don't want to give a child that kind of power because he doesn't know what to do with it. And he either destroy himself or somebody else. And oh, so yeah. as, in reference to the scripture, when it talks about his tongue and the, and the fires that it kindled, yeah. God, man, that, that was, he was, it was a perfect illustration of that. Yeah. He is the poster child for that scripture. Mm. Woo! And, and, and we not we look and we're not even we're not trying to be uh, judgmental. We're just going by the fruits of what we saw. Right? Exactly what we saw right? I mean, no, I'm not trying to judge him. Yeah, it's a danger. It's a danger. What's coming out of our mouth? In other words, yeah. that's what they're talking about. In other words, we created to me uh, a society where we made the the whole society in a game, and and because the whole society is in the game. Now the rules of being on the field was applying. You know what I mean? Yes. Where, where people could feel free. Okay, we go. I was to crush my opponent. Yes. That's, that's that's what the rules of the game is on the field, on a baseball, yes. basketball, football, tennis. Yes. You want to crush your opponent. Yes. You because that's where you win. But yes. that's only supposed to stay within the. That's that's a game. Right, that's yes. that, and that's why they call it a baseball field, football field. But in society, that cannot be a game like that. And, and unfortunately, I think a lot of people think that there's, it is. I think uh, so. I agree. Not in society like ours. In, in David's time, warfare was norm, and the, the weaponry I think wasn't as devastating as we have here. The, the, the ability to annihilate each other wasn't as great. I mean, it's just so many people you can kill that one with a sword, I guess, unless you like, well, who is it? The one that kills a thousand yeah. men with a job on her and ass? Right. <laughs> <I can't stop. laughs> Most of us can't do that. <laughs> now, and I think that's what old Paul, because you, if you remember, the in, in politics, let's talk about politics, that's why you have debates. And that meant, that's why they even have rules in the debate, right? They, these are two opponents that come together and they will debate their position yes. uh, and why they should be the best person for the office. But that stays within, that's, that competition is with those two opponents. I, you, you can have it, but not with the, 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 what you call the audience is my point. I, I the, think that if we look at it, we still are involved in, 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 in conflict and we'll be, we've just begun. We thank God that we survived what, What's happening with, with Mr. Trump as a nation? Because we didn't go fist to cuff. We didn't be in the middle of the middle speaking, start shooting each other down. But we will continue this conflict through rhetoric. And I think that words are literally the weapons of a civilized people. That's what it is. You know, we, we have to be able to communicate our differences in a non lethal. I can't say none threatening because whenever my ideology is brought up the question, I'm threatened. I feel threatened. But yeah. I shouldn't feel threatened to the point where I don't want to survive the conflict. Exactly. And, and I think that that is the place where he was willing in so many places to bring the nation. I recall when he said uh, that the, we were in a war with COVID. Uh-huh. And that all of us, he looked at as the, the American people as being a part of that warfare. All Americans were now, in a sense, military members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when he, he did that, he 
begin to equate the civilian population to those of us who actually suited up to yeah. go to warfare. Right. Now, that was unfair to the people who didn't want to be a part of that. The one thing that uh, helped me with this one, Dad, uh, when we put those suits on, yes, sir. we agreed to risking our lives to protect the interests of this nation. Yes, sir. We volunteered to do that. Right. These people were brought into a warfare with the <laughs> disease and they were put at risk and encouraged to, to risk their lives to further with the gender. And that's the only one I could receive in this case was the economy. Yeah, that would be what looking at, right? We I mean, were willing yeah. to sacrifice human lives yeah. because we were at warfare with the disease to further the economy. So there was the balance that he was trying to achieve and saying that we can lose, like we say, we said in the military, we're going to lose a few, but we're going to win this fight. And he did that to the, the, the innocents in the United States of America. The babies and, 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 and older people and and I mean, people that had no no earthly idea of what was really going on, they he kind of put them in situations where their lives were being threatened unnecessarily. Right. So. right, and the people, you know, he and Biden was very effective saying is that missing person at the table. You know what I mean? Yes. That, that, that missing person yes. in your home. Yes. Uh, that 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 those numbers represent somebody not being at the table at somebody's home, not being in their in the in their company anymore. It it, it represent a subtraction, and you you've seen as in some cases some people lost almost a whole family. Yeah, you know, uh, I mean that was not a joke, uh, and that had to be taken seriously because, like I said again. What you do on a basketball court and a football court is not what you do in a community or society. We cannot be divisive. We, you know, the Bible said a house divided cannot stand. Exactly. Right? Read, let's read the other part of that for people to see uh, the where where what the issue with that. Because James was a real good chat, is a real good chapter. I'm gonna change, I, I gotta change the slide. One second. I gotta go to the next one. Go ahead, sir. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, mm. that it defiles the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature. Mm. And it is set on fire of hell. Woo! Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. It's speaking for itself, ain't it? Amen, man. <laughs> for every kind of beast in the and a bird, and a serpent, and of things in the sea is tamed, and has been tamed of mankind. Mm -hmm. But the tongue can no man tame. Mm. It is an unruly evil, Woo. deadly poison. Woo, full of deadly poison. Hey, the Lord no. inspired you to bring this at this time, but it was <laughs> definitely a time to mess it. You see? <laughs> it's definitely a time to mess it. Bless we God. Even the Father, and there was cursed we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Mm. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursing. Uh -huh. And brethren, these things ought not so to be. Oh, we might need to talk about that for a second, don't we? Because, because, because I think people don't understand what's the problem. These things not ought to be. Amen. <laughs> Put that light back on so we can see you anyway. You can see you. Uh, we, you look at dark and the shadow on this on that screen. Uh, the light is on. I'm not sure why that is flickering like that. Okay, because you had a good. Uh, nothing, nothing's changing over here that I in the room, but I don't know. Maybe it's the camera on the on the computer. Hey, Alan, I, I took it, I took it off the screen for a second because let let maybe we ought to focus on that that script you just read, right? Oh yeah. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. And the Lord said in the word, my brethren, everybody listen to this video, listen, listen to the scriptures. 
These things ought not to be. We, we can't be like the Sadducees, Sadducees and Pharisees because, <coughs> matter of fact, we didn't see no blessing come out of their mouth <laughs> in that particular, in the scriptures, but that's not what many. they're trying to portray, right? Not but many, they're yeah, sitting in there praying and want to be seen by men on the streets and everything. I guess that's where you see a blessing, right? That form of godliness. Amen. But their behavior, you know, when Jesus sat there and said, Man, that woman that, that was uh, a child of God, children of Israel, child of Israel, they were, had that infirmity. Well, he, uh, how, many years, how many years? Twelve years. And, Twelve. Said, and, and, they, and they were more indignant on the violation of the law. And he, he, remember Christ even was upset with that, wasn't he? He was, he was yeah. grieved that the mercy was, 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 was overshadowed by the law. And that's why he's saying is that that scripture you just read, and I'll put it back up there so you keep on reading. People need to see the scriptures are very clear about this stuff. And I'm, you know, and that's why I'm saying we have people with, evangelicals and stuff like that, they needed, that's what, Elder, is that not what, if they're supposed to be spiritual advisors, right? That's yeah. what you, that's what you are, right? That's if, what that's, we're if, yeah. if you that's take, what if you take that position, if you take that responsibility to be a spiritual advisor, should so many times the scripture should have been, should have been read to the man. That, every day. It should, it should have been his diet. Yeah. But uh, yeah. unfortunately, the, the ones who went discredited the kingdom, I, I would say, either they didn't advise him or he didn't listen to them. But his behavior was solely against what's taught to us as members of the kingdom to be the proper behavior. Yes, sir. So I don't know how they were advising him. I really don't. I don't. At one right. point, I remember him, him saying things like the uh, virus would go away by uh, uh, uh Easter or something like that, I can't yeah. remember. But only a couple of, couple of months, couple of days, couple of weeks, and it's going to be behind us. And I kept hearing him say stuff that you could have, you could have interpreted as being encouraging to the American people. Yeah, right. And then I thought about the scripture when it says, speak those things that be not as though they were. Right. And um, I, I, I remember that he had been supposedly being counseled by some of the the, the, the evangelicals, right? And I, I was wondering if they had, you know, maybe, um, uh, you know, introduced him to that, 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 that theology, but, um, it didn't work for him. And, and I think the things that we speak have to be within the, when the, within the, uh, the will of God, right? You know, and I think it'd be well that you have that kind of communication with him so you can discern what his will is. Right. Um, and, but, but, but it, it, it just turned out to be a bunch of lies. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it was, it was continuous. It was a continuous flow of information that was erroneous. Right. And um, it, it corrupted any information that might've been legitimate because the one thing that he said initially was that it was all fake news. Everything else was fake news. Yeah. So the, the yeah. American people lost sight of what yeah. was a lie and what was the truth. At some point, you don't know who listened to him anymore. Exactly. But I, you but could I think, say I think, I think you couldn't been. listen to him because everything that he said never came to pass. Right. So he discredited yeah. himself through his, his conversation. Yeah. But unfortunately, a lot of the American people did not even seem to think like that was a great issue. Well, you know, I heard some one one of, one of my uh, uh, friends said that. Well, I like him because he said he does exactly what he says he's going to do. He he does he does exactly what he says. He do exactly what he does. You know what he say? I say I'm gonna do it. He say he go and he do it and he does it. And I sit there and for example, somebody was sitting there saying is the uh, the wall right? Somebody was talking yeah. about the wall right? And said they said they built the wall and, and that makes going to pay for it. And Mexico, well, let's go. Let's go with the part that says you built the wall, right? The and 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 when when I told one person, I said, "Well, of the new wall, 
only five miles have been, or eight miles has been built. What was, what was refurbished was the upgrading of the existing wall, right? Right. But only, only five to 10 miles were built that were new and not paid by Mexico but on top of that. Mm. Yet the person said he, he, he does what he says. Well, I, I don't mean no harm. I'm just saying is let the, if you know, once again, a tree is known by its fruit. And you can't lie. You can't make up a lie to say somebody's doing what they said they're going to do. And, and, and I think that you remember there's a scripture that talked about when the, uh, that God was sent to the nation great illusion that they would believe the lie. Yeah. It talks about the Lord uh, says, and if I've got to be here, who is here from the law, those who have had their mind, their mind blinded by the God of this world. Yeah. So it's as though with Mr. Trump, there came a spirit of deception that was extremely uh, influential. He, now that's, this journalism, I might be just too off on left field in this, there was one or two things that were either happening. The country itself has gotten so accustomed to lies that it doesn't really think that that's you know, a big issue. And I think about advertising. Uh, we're, we're, we're subjected to false advertising every day. Right. Toothpaste will make your teeth brighter and the girls will come and this is good for your hair and this is diet food and this here is good for you and so forth and so on. But, and all of it is a bunch of lies. We think about the founding of the nation itself, and just with the Native Americans. Woo! The treaties that were, were actually, you know, uh, established with these people, and how many of them were actually kept. And of course, with my studies in history, not one. Wow. The treaty wow. that was signed with the Native Americans was broken. And yeah. so the country itself, maybe the foundation of it is has been lies. Yeah. And there are lies that are told even now and propagated uh, half truths, mistruths. I mean, it's, it, it's just a lot of lies in our nation. And our nation is embracing that. And I was wondering if that is what we saw manifested in Mr. Trump, who's obviously his reporting of the events was erroneous. But people nonetheless embraced him as a worthy, a person worthy to maintain their leadership. Well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me throw something at you. Uh, and, and let's leave his name out for, for I can record this better and I can edit it. <laughs> oh, you, oh, okay. You know, I mean, we put it out, we get, let's, let's refer to, you can say the president or, or you right. know, you talk more in general so we can use that. Cause even what I just said, it's gonna be edited out, right? But I think we'll use what we did so far, but let's, as we move forward, let's keep the names out as we could. Okay. If possible, uh, but but Elder, what, one of the things is that you you was hitting on something that we definitely should put out is the Charlottesville situation was an example, <laughs> and you got to remember what it was all about it was pulling down statues of, of 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 a lie, right? It was I don't mean to harm people. You can't glorify rebels and and say that. That's our tradition. That's our heritage. If you're going to do it, you got to tell them what they were. These were rebels who was fought, fought stand up for a cause that impacted a group of people. You know what I mean? Uh, the states' rights, right? It was it was all about state rights, but rights to do what? Right to enslave millions of people. And, and, and I think if there was any. Great.